Hello, I'm Lindsay. This is the third part in the series on how to make a website. In this tutorial, I'm going to have a look at how to make a site using a different text editor than Notepad. We'll use Notepad, Notepad++ this time. And we'll look at how to insert images into the web page and also <coughs> how to link to different, different sites and also link within the site. Okay, so first of all, <coughs> We'll have a look at the page we did last time. And this time when we edit the, the page, we'll use Notepad++. To get to Notepad++, all we need to do is search for it. And it should be the first one that comes up and click on the download link. And download it. Okay, and once it, once it is in, installed, uh, it'll come up on your desktop or wherever you save it. If you've got a desktop, desktop icon, it'll look like that. Okay, and I'm going to use some pictures um, to put on the page as well later on. So I've got a koala here. Okay, and what what is uh, what a good idea to do is to make a separate folder for your website. So I'm going to make another folder here. Oops, new. And we'll make this site um, demo site. Just call it demo. We'll put in the website and we'll open up that page, that folder, sorry. And we'll make a, a new folder in here called images. That's where we'll put that one. Alright, now to open it up in Notepad++, you can, we can either just drag it onto there, or, or we could have just went file, open, and, and then you can find it from wherever you've saved it. Okay, so I've got this up here. I use it in half the screen, so on the other half of the screen I can view it from the, from the web page. Okay, so it's good to try and get it aligned like that so you can see it both at the same time. So at first we'll take off the um, the extra underline here by putting in the closing tag of the underline. It's been left out there. So there's the closing tag for the underline. Control S to save and refresh. And you can see that that's been taken off. The other thing I, I made a mistake in last time is to say that that's where you close off the the line break, it's not, you don't actually need to close off line breaks unless you're um, coding for XHTML standard. And for XHTML, it's like that, it's at the end. So I'll save that and you won't see any difference. <coughs> for X, X uh, sorry, for HTML5, you don't need to have a closing close off the um, line breaks okay or images or self close any self closing tags you don't need need it on all right so I'm going to put in a uh, image I'll put that right down underneath there I'll make this one the image of the koala so for the image tag it's just IMG and you need to say where it comes from. That's the source equals. Okay, I'll just get that in a moment. And we can also put. You can put a height and a width if you like. And I'll do that later. And also put in the alternate text for when you hover over it. I'll just call it koala. You could put a title attribute in, which is basically the same as an alt. Um, different browsers may read it differently. Okay, and then we can just close it off like that. You don't need the closing off um, forward slash just for XHTML. You can. Alright, and there we go. 
um, I'll save that, refresh, you just see a little spot there where the image would go. Okay, so we'll just find the location of this koala one. Minimize those. So I've got them in a demo folder. So I've got this one. Now the location of the image is in relation to this file. So we need to use images and then koala. We can find out the type of image it is by looking at the properties. This is a JPEG. So it'll be koala.jpg. And it's a capital K, it is case sensitive. If you put a small K for koala, it won't recognize, won't pick it up. Okay, so I'll open up these again. Okay, so then the source will be images forward slash koala with a capital K dot jpg. That's in quotation marks. Save that, and this will be the full size image. As you can see, it's quite a large image. Uh, we'll make that smaller, so about 25% of the size will be fine. So for the width, you can either, either say the width in pixels, or you can do other methods. Um, I'll use percentage. I'll make it about 25% of that original one. Now if I adjust the width, the height will automatically adjust if it's percentages. So width equals 25%. Save that, refresh. Okay, so that's going to be 25% of the original. And that also, as you can see, it does adjust the size as you adjust the window, which is interesting. <coughs> If I made that, for example, um, 250 pixels, this, refresh, that will stay 250 pixels no matter the size of the window. All right, so it's up to you really. And I'll put a, another image so we can link to it from the top of the page. So we'll go down, right down to the bottom of this, so in a, in a spot where you can't see it on this page here. So I'll make a, a put in a, a few more lists, copy and paste this one a few times. Control S to save and refresh. Okay, so I'm going to put another image right at the bottom of there. I can just copy and paste that one. This is probably a good idea to put a line break at the end of there as well. Because if you put text straight after there, it would be right next to the image. Alright, and paste that down the bottom. Okay, so we've We've got two images now. I'll make this one a bit larger, 50%. And refresh. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link from the top of the page. I'm going to make a link, two links. One's to an external link and one's to the koala at the bottom of the page. 